I was going to do that. <laughs> so I get off the plane and I forgot to undo my seatbelt and I'm pulling the plane through the terminal. <laughs> and the wings are knocking people over. <laughs> and then I almost broke both my arms trying to hold open a revolving door for a woman. Then I tried to hang myself with bungee cord. <laughs> I kept almost dying. <laughs> and then I went into a store and I tried to buy something to put underneath the coasters. <laughs> and then I went to a museum where they had all the heads and arms from the statues that are in all the other museums. <laughs> So I'm driving down the street and there's a guy hitchhiking and I figure I'll go back and pick him up. So before I back up, I put a tape and I had a tape of that noise that trucks make when they back up. <laughs> I had a bootleg version of that. And I put the tape in and I'm backing up, backing up, backing up and I get there and the guy gets in and he, I says to him, where are you going? And he said, I love this album. And I said, all right, so we start driving, and I'm being really careful because it's an old car, and I installed my own airbags in it. <laughs> I got an old beanbag chair. <laughs> and some helium and a compressor, and if I just hit the accident just right, I should be floating up in the sky laughing hysterically. <laughs> so we drive, and I said to him, uh... If I get tired, will you drive? And he said, no, I can't drive an automatic. <laughs> and then he said to me, did you ever fall asleep driving? And I said, no, I've woken up driving. And a red light came on the dashboard and he said, what's that? And I said, don't worry about it. That's just to tell whether or not that bulb is working. <laughs> and then we saw a sign, next mile, one mile. <laughs> and then another sign, next rest area, 25 miles. And I thought, wow, that's pretty big. People must get really tired around here. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm a student. I said, really, what are you studying? He said, journalism. And I said, really, I'm writing a short story myself right now. It's the uh, story of a photographer who goes completely insane trying to take a close-up photograph of the horizon. And he said to me, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm a peripheral visionary. <laughs> I can see into the future, but just way off to the side. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's a school bus conked out on the railroad tracks. Train is coming, bus train, bus train. Oh, no. <laughs> can you feel the tension? Like in the movies, you know, you see the train, you see the bus getting closer, oh my god. In the movies. You know in the movies when somebody reads a letter and you hear the voice of the person who wrote the letter? <laughs> that kills me. <laughs> that happens to me when I read menus. <laughs> bus train, bus train, oh my god. My guy says to me, my God, these people are going to be killed instantly. I said, well, everybody dies instantly. <laughs> it's the only way you can die. You're alive, you're alive, you're alive, then you're dead. <laughs> he said, but they're not going to die of natural causes. I said, they're getting hit by a train. Naturally, they're going to die. And I said to him, you know, we better get out of here. They're going to blame this on us. <laughs> so 
so we start driving away and uh, put the other tape I had in. I had a uh, tape, uh, Best of Music. <laughs> I only like one side of it. <laughs> and we're driving and I go too fast and the police pulls us over and he says, license and registration, please. And I lean over to get it and I said to the guy, my God, that cop's voice, that's the guy who writes the menus. <laughs> And he said, what? And I said, never mind, I'll tell you later. <laughs> so I give him the stuff and I said, by the way, do you know what today's specials are? <laughs> and he said, what are you, wise guy? And I said, I have my moments of clear perspective. <laughs> and we were arrested. <laughs> I've been arrested several times. I can't wait to be arrested and go all the way to the witness stand. You swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, you are ugly. <laughs> See that woman in the jury? I'd really like to sleep with her. <laughs> Should I keep going or are you going to ask me questions? <laughs> thinking about my grandfather and how he had a special rocking chair built that would lean forward rather than backwards so he could fake interest in any conversation. <laughs> I remember when I was a fetus, I used to sneak out at night when my mother was sleeping. I thought to myself, you know, now's the time I should start stealing some stuff since I don't have any fingerprints. <laughs> I remember when I was seven, my grandmother said, Stephen, come over here. And I said, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, you know, you're over there, now come over here. I said, all right, and then she said, here's ten dollars, and don't tell your mother that I'm giving this to you. And I said, it'll cost you more than that. <laughs> I got a new dog, he's a paranoid retriever. <laughs> he brings back everything, because he's not sure what I throw him. <laughs> Thanks a lot.